There's been a lot more coverage of the Second World War than the First, as most of you are no doubt aware. And we've noticed that probably because of that lack of coverage, people have a lot of misconceptions about the First World War. How and where it happened and who was fighting it. And we're going to try to fix that today. I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to a Great War special episode, the top 10 popular misconceptions about the war. Number 10. Russia was only a second grade military power in the First World War. Not true. Russia may have left the war after the revolution and certainly the great retreat and disasters like the Battle of Tannenberg don't exactly make the Russian military record shine. But the Russian army was anything but a pushover. At this time, a hundred years ago, they were just romping through eastern Anatolia and the Brusilov offensive and the innovative tactics it used came seriously close to knocking Austria out of the war or even collapsing the entire Austro-Hungarian Empire. It certainly broke the back of their army. The enormous growth and modernization of the Russian military industry by 1916 was also nothing to sneeze at. Number nine, everything has already been said about the war. No, new stuff is being discovered all the time, like that Edith Cavill actually was spying for Britain, or that Falkenhayn's claim that the Battle of Verdun was to bleed France to death is quite likely an invention after the fact. Files are being declassified even now, a hundred years after the war. Who knows what we're going to find out? Number eight, the Germans were the bad guys in the war. Really? Since they were the bad guys in World War II and wartime stories of the bloodthirsty Huns circulated in Allied media, they had to be the bad guys, right? And they got all the blame at Versailles in 1919. That has to count for something. Well, not so much. Was it Germany's fault that the whole house of cards came crashing down? That the war escalated into the horror that it did? Not so much more than anybody else in Europe, who all had outdated ideas about the necessity of the war and how to pursue it. And sure, you do have episodes like the Rape of Belgium, but atrocities were committed by all sides. Uh, the Armenian Genocide and the massacres committed by the Russians in East Prussia in 1914 spring to mind. Just because somebody is the enemy doesn't mean that they're the bad guy. Sometimes there is no bad guy. Sometimes everyone is the bad guy. Number seven, the war in the skies was a gentleman's war. The flying aces like the Red Baron and Billy Bishop, they were the rock stars of the war, gliding above the carnage and fighting man to man chivalrously, except again, not so much. They were fighting with machine guns, and they were most often flying in formations by the second half of the war when the average life expectancy of the pilots could be measured in hours. And never forget, the perfect kill happened when the enemy never saw you coming. Number six, World War I was a European war, and not a world war. Not true. It had its origins in Europe, and there was certainly a lot of the fighting done in Europe, but you know, once the Ottoman Empire joined, you should have a clue how it would spread. Even before that, Japan fought against Germany. The United States and Brazil would eventually join the war. There were battles in the South Pacific and the South Atlantic. Soldiers from every continent, except Antarctica, would fight. And of course, there was fighting all over Africa, mainly by colonial overlords, but there were fronts in Persia, Mesopotamia, Libya, and even the borders of India. Definitely a world war here. Number five. The war was only fought in the trenches. The trenches are the symbol of World War I, and while they appeared on pretty much every front, the vast trench networks were only really common on the Western Front. In the deserts or the huge open spaces of the Eastern Front, cavalry played a bigger role, and huge trench systems would have been most often impossible to maintain. Number four, tactics during the war didn't change. It's easy to think that, looking at the week-by-week -week carnage, how we cover it. But if you look at tactics in 1914 and those in 1918, it would be difficult to find many real similarities. The stalemate across the various fronts pretty much forced tactical innovation. Heck, the war saw the advent of mechanized mobile warfare, and certainly the techniques Hitler's Wehrmacht used at the beginning of World War II grew directly out of those used at the end of World War I. Number three, navies did not play a real part in World War I. Well, 
The biggest battle in naval history, the Battle of Jutland, happened in World War I. Uh, Britain's Atlantic blockade of Germany was a big factor in depriving Germany of supplies. There were countless naval skirmishes all over the war. Germany tried to turn the tide of war with unrestricted U-boat warfare. And if you look at the Mediterranean, the major powers there were using their navies to block each other. There were also um, great stories of German raiders like the Meuve or the Emden, which you should definitely check out out there. Number two, the German army wasn't defeated in World War I. Yes, they were. They endured far longer than anyone could have imagined, and their final offensives in 1918 were real forces to be reckoned with, but the state of the army by the summer of 1918 was catastrophic in terms of supplies and morale. And the state of their allies was worse. Austria-Hungary never really recovered after 1916. The Ottoman Empire had huge problems even before the war, and the Bulgarian army collapsed. And the German army did call for a ceasefire before the Allies broke through the Hindenburg Line, which they would have done. Number one, World War I was mainly fought on the Western Front. There was the Eastern Front, the Serbian Front, the Italian Front, the Salonika Front, Gallipoli, the Persian Front, the Mesopotamian Front, the Palestine Front, the Libyan Front, the Caucasus Front, the Romanian Front, East Africa, Southwest Africa, Cameroon, the War at Sea, uh, the Arab Revolt. Did I, did I miss anything? The Western Front was but a fraction, and not even a big fraction, of the total of the First World War. Okay, well that is my list for now. Now no doubt you have many things you disagree with or many others you'd like to add to the list. Please let us know in the comments. And for anyone new to our channel, you can find over 200 videos about World War I on our channel. But if you're a bit overwhelmed with the selection, you can check out our 101 video right here. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.